This is TJ Watt using smelling salts just a few minutes after taking a serious knee to the head at the start of Thursday night's football game. And we since found out this morning that he's now been placed in the concussion protocol. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter. My goal on the channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. Now, last year, of course, I was really critical and talked a lot about what happened with Tua and his head injuries. And I gotta say what we saw this past week with TJ Watt, now learning he's been in the concussion protocol, is probably the worst thing that we've seen since what happened with Tua. So let's just talk through everything that was missed here. And I wanna also walk through what I would do if I were the head team physician, because ultimately at the end of the day, I think the Steelers organization has to admit that they messed this up. Something went wrong somewhere to not recognize that TJ Watt sustained a concussion on that first play of the game. So I wanna talk through what I would do, kinda of how I would handle this, and maybe that'll be educational for any learners watching. First things first, it's not unheard of for somebody to report delayed concussion symptoms, meaning we saw some concerning hit, we did an exam at the field, their exam was negative, they looked good, but then the following day they report symptoms. So that in and of itself is not a concerning thing. But when we hear about these delayed presentations, the first thing we have to do is look back and say, was there a mechanism, was there a time where we could justify or say that a concussion likely occurred. And I think there's no doubt with what that moment was here for TJ Watt. Very first play of the game, takes this inadvertent knee and the announcers kind of unfortunately said it looked like he took a knee more to the face, but this should be considered just a knee to the head. I mean, yeah, the face mask is there, but look at how Watt's head is pointed straight forward. And then as this knee comes through, his head gets knocked off to the side. And so yes, this does push his face mask back. Yes, this could potentially injure the jaw, but this also definitely has to be considered from the spotters, from the independent neuros, as a blow that would be concerning for a potential head injury. And then of course we saw how Watt remained down on the field, needed some time to get up. And the first thing with all this that I don't understand is why there was no head evaluation. Now this doesn't entirely fall in the Steelers, right? There's independent spotters, there's the independent neurologist, there's a lot of different layers of people responsible for making that call down to say this player needs to have an evaluation for a head injury, take them back into the blue medical tent. We didn't see any of that. We just saw Watt on the sideline talking with presumably the Steelers on medical staff, but he never went into the blue tent. There didn't appear to be any head injury evaluation despite what everybody saw on the replay. So that I think is issue number one, not so much within the Steelers organization, but whatever happened with the independent system that was in place at the game needs to be examined because those people, in my opinion, are just as accountable here for not phoning down and saying, hey, the independent neuros need to do an exam of this player who was taken off the field after getting kneed in the head and looking to be a little bit slow to get up. The next concerning thing then is of course, just a few minutes later, so this is with 6.40 left in the first quarter, injury happened on the very first play. So this is maybe in real time, 10, 15, 20 minutes later, we see Watt on the sideline, clearly with that sort of dazed deer in the headlights look, he's squinting his eyes, something we very much see with people who are dealing with a head injury and we see him using some smelling salts right here. Now, the big question here, if I'm in charge of the medical staff and I'm looking back at something that happened to my team a couple days later is, where did he get smelling salts? Now I have a whole separate video with a little bit of a rant about how much I think smelling salts should have zero place on the sideline of any athletic event. There's no benefit whatsoever to their performance. It's been studied. All it can do is cause potential harm. And in this case, be something that an athlete might use to try and recover from symptoms that may be related to a head injury. Now, this is not TJ Watt's fault. Now, he presumably either asked for smelling salts or somebody gave him smelling salts. But number one, my question here is, what are we doing with smelling salts on the sideline? And number two, who gave that athlete smelling salts? Because yes, if you've been paying attention to the game, you should know that there was an injury. You always should be asking, why does this person need smelling salts instead of just casually handing them out? And so the fact that we saw somebody who took a head blow was not told to be evaluated by the independent neurology team from the stadium spotters, the independent groups, and then just roughly eight minutes of game time later, we see on the sidelines using smelling salts and returning to play are extreme, extremely concerning red flags for some failure in this whole system, how he got the smelling salts, why there was no evaluation, why they even have smelling salts on the sideline. And then things get even more concerning if that's not enough. Now in the start of the second quarter, Watt is still in the game. We've not heard anything about a head injury evaluation, just that they had to stop some bleeding that was on his chin because it looked like on a separate play, Ezekiel Elliott's heel kind of kicked up and hit him in the back of the chin. But now what do we see? But we see TJ Watt wearing a dark visor. Now, Watt, I believe, wears a dark visor in his warmups, but does not wear a dark visor during the game, was not wearing a dark visor before. And of course, one of the common symptoms of a concussion 
is photophobia, which is light sensitivity. And so there were no eye injuries that were being evaluated and eye injury is the only reason I could justify why you would put a visor on somebody. And so we've got the smelling salts, we've got the hit to the head. Now you're seeing your player who you've previously been concerned about an injury to the head, whether it was the face or the jaw, putting on a different visor. These are enough things that you have to wonder why questions weren't raised by your medical team. And then what, presumably you would check on them at halftime. And so checking on them at halftime, you've seen the visor, you probably haven't seen the smelling salts, but he may mention that he used them. And still we didn't really necessarily hear anything about a head injury evaluation. Then to make it even more concerning after the game, there was a report that he missed his interview because of a migraine. So there's already symptoms starting to set in. So what would I do if I was in charge of this team? Because I'm a team physician, I cover a college football team, and so it's very possible that my team could end up on a replay one morning because of a player who had a delayed concussion and there might've been something concerning that we missed. So what would I do if I was in charge? I think step one is you have to come out and you have to say, we screwed up, the system failed, and instead of putting it necessarily on one individual player publicly or one individual person publicly, I should say, you have to admit, number one, that the process failed on multiple levels. This wasn't just the independent neuro spotters and the independent ATs in the booth. This wasn't just the Steelers medical staff. This was a system-wide failure. And you have to admit and say we messed up because public, the fans are smart enough this day and age where you can't just say, well, you know, we're gonna kind of blow it off. You gotta admit, number one, that you screwed up and you're investigating how to do better. I think you have to investigate that on multiple levels then. What happened with why there was no initial head injury evaluation that was phoned down? Number two, what are we doing with smelling salts on the sideline? Where did the smelling salts come from? If people are just willy-nilly able to get smelling salts, then I would institute a change on my team where number one, I wouldn't wanna have them. But if we had to have them, there has to be some system of who's getting smelling salts. We can't just have them laying around for people to reach out and grab. And so maybe that's a change that you make so that we're not getting smelling salts passed around to potential head injury athletes. The next thing is then if we're paying attention, so after we see somebody concerning for head injury or any injury, we keep an eye on them through the game. And so then I'm checking to see, did we properly check in at halftime? Were we keeping an eye on things? Were we factoring in the visor change? Those are the questions that I would be asking. But I think the big thing first off is you have to admit that you made a mistake. And if I'm ever in that situation, I hope I would do the same. But I think you can't just skirt by this and try and fool the fans. I think the Steelers need to come out and say, yeah, the system failed, something messed up here, we messed up here, likely not just one individual person, there's likely multiple things where the system failed, but you have to acknowledge that the system failed. The system failed TJ Watt, and the system needs to be examined to figure out what we can do better. Whether it's, again, lack of smelling salt, something, if there's an equipment change that needs to prompt the independent neuro to take a look, something needs to be changed from the situation because I don't think we've seen this exact type of scenario where this many things have happened, but hopefully we'll learn from it. Admit accountability here, admit that the team screwed up, learn from it, and then move forward. I don't want people to get fired. Nobody should get fired over this because I don't think it was one individual person. I think it was the system as a whole that needs to be looked at to see what can be done better. I wish the best for TJ and his recovery. Of course, when you continue to play through things that are concerning for a head injury, there's always a chance things could get worse. And so hopefully we're not dealing with any more prolonged recovery or prolonged symptoms. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.